open up our hearts to what the Lord has for us this morning. Welcome. We just have a couple of things. We will be having communion this morning, a little bit later. But for right now, the altar is open. The altar is open um, during the time of uh, worship, service, any time that you feel that you want to go down, that you feel that God is calling you to the altar to lay over a burden, whatever it is, to give him praise, to glorify him, you are welcome to come down. You can also just sit there in your seats. God doesn't care. He's everywhere. Amen? Amen. We do have prayer cards for those of you who are um, new to our church. We have prayer cards that are in the back of your chairs. If you do have any kind of prayer request, whether it's for yourself, your family, friends, anybody, um, and you would like our prayer team and our pastor to um, pray for and to know, please fill these out. And there are prayer boxes in the back of the sanctuary that you can just drop those in, and we'll make sure that um, they go out to our uh, prayer team. So right now we'll go ahead and let's just pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just praise you today and just want to glorify the love that you just have for us, Lord Jesus, that we cannot fathom the love of that, Lord, but we know in our hearts that you love us, and we can just rest in that. We just pray this morning, open our ears, Lord Jesus, to whatever it is, what message do you want to give us through Pastor Sean and through Dave and the worship team, Lord. We just praise you. We just thank you. In your son's name, amen. If you're able to, would you stand in the presence of God? Let's just give him some, ex extol his name. Give him praise today.
great is thy faithfulness oh god my father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not thy transgressions they fail Sing that again. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, O oh, they fail not. to see all of your faces today and to see you singing these praises to the Lord. I just look out if you could see all of your faces. And I think it's because we knew the song, right? But you were all singing and it was beautiful. It's a beautiful sight. Let's continue to praise him and the goodness of God.
I think we're going to have a little video. <laughs> what if we knew that Jesus was coming back in 10 years? It would change everything. That is how I want us to live as a generation. And that is what we're going to talk about at If Gathering 2023. We do not want you to miss it. We want you to gather your people in your home, in your local church, on your college campus. We want you to gather your people and participate with us as we follow God together. I still cannot believe that I get to do this. Don't miss this. Gather your people and let's watch God move. Okay, so I get to share a little bit about that to say we are gathering our people. I like that that phrase gather your people and that's all of us and anyone else we can pull along lord that we just want so much to invite people into this weekend it's a friday night and saturday the teaching um, is really awesome with a variety of speakers so if you're not really into one you might be into the next one there's like i i think by the end of the weekend we will have heard about six different top-notch speakers and worship um, what I love about it, too, is that there's time we're going to have a meal on Friday, 
um, evening, Saturday breakfast and lunch, and there'll be time for discussion and rubbing shoulders with each other. So I would love, this will be my first kind of bigger event with you all as women, and I just look forward to it and hope you all will want to come and bring someone with you. So that's coming up, and I and Cindy, after you've given us a chance to get back there, we'll be back there for um, signing up if you want to come. So there's that. And then I get to say the prayer over the offering, but I just, I have to say something about those two songs that we sang. Great is thy faithfulness. I have a playlist that's called My Heart Songs, and I listen to them almost every day. I almost every day sing my heart out with Great is Thy Faithfulness because it's just all we have need of, his hand has provided. And honestly, that offering that we give is just giving back to him what's already his to say, Lord, you've cared for us. We want to honor you with whatever we have that we can give and knowing that he will use it to his glory. And also that goodness of God, oh, my part, that part where it says, all my life you've been faithful. It doesn't matter if we've been, we're still little ones to seniors. It's uh, so true. We can look back. There's been hard things, too, because life is a good, hard life. But God's with us. Okay, I'll pray. (laughs) Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. You've been so, so good in our lives, and we give you honor, and we just want to take this offering to give glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I think I need to say also that this is a week that we don't have um, children's church. It's the first Sunday of each month, so you get the kids get to be in with us. Thanks. Beloved of God, I greet you in the strong name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you are. You're the beloved of God. You're the apple of his eye. Cindy was right. You look good with even when you're not singing. No, it's... You know, we go through life, don't we? And it's... it's <laughs> uh, we get rained on. And... That idea that we are beloved by God, that's not a real common message. Did you run across that just kind of out and about this last week? <laughs> that you are precious to the Lord? I didn't, I'm not making this up. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all throughout the scriptures. The Lord loves you. We're, we're going to share communion in just a little little while. And when we do, I made it a practice in 24 years of pastoring when, when I have the privilege of serving communion to remind the beloved, you're loved by God. It's my very favorite thing to say as a pastor. There's a, I have a lot of them, but that's probably at the top of the list. Lord, thank you so much for your kindness to us. Thank you for your unmerited love toward us. Thank you, Lord, that you don't make us earn it. But Lord, we want your help to follow. We do want to be faithful. We want to be like you and that we would return your love with faithful obedience. But even in that, Lord, we need your help. So as we're gathered here, and we just breathe in and out prayer and praise in our time together. 
we're asking, Lord, that you would be willing to make yourself known to us in ways that we can understand you today. It's our hope and our prayer that the things that we say, the thoughts that we think, the prayers that we pray would be pleasing to you, Lord. There's no one else who is our rock and our redeemer. You're it. Father and Son and Holy Spirit, we worship you as the one true God. We acknowledge your presence here with us. It is such an honor, Lord, to be in your presence. Amen. And I greet those of you that are online with us. The Lord bless you as the beloved of God. I want to put into context something that Stacy said at the start about the altars being open. If, you, if this is your home church, then you kind of have an idea of what that is. But sometimes it's good just to reframe the things that we say, isn't it? An altar is a place traditionally of sacrifice or offering, offerings of praise, request for help. We have actual altars here. And in the corporate gatherings, almost all of them, we want to be intentional about saying, this is a place in the corporate gathering where we can seek God in a variety of ways, right? And that's, that's one of those that's traditionally been important and encouraging to the church. But I want to remind you, when you leave this corporate gathering, when you leave this house of worship, The altar is open between you and God. It's always open. We can approach the throne of God, as the writer in Hebrews says, with, without fear we can approach the Lord, the one who gives mercy, with confidence. Why? Because of his love. It's not because of our condition that we can approach God, whether it's here or in a private altar of prayer. It's because of him that we can have confidence to approach him. So let me just remind you that as we leave in a little bit, the corporate gathering, the altar that is, it's really, it's inward, that is open between you and the Lord. You may need or want this week to have a moment of altar time. Would it help you to know that God would love to have that time with you? He welcomes you to that time. A couple other things before we get to the word. Um, I, I want to say thank you to Alex. Alex, thank you so much for that good word that you brought to us last week. You want to talk about, I think I heard um, Jenny Allen talk about, and Diane, world-class speakers at the IF event. And ladies, I hope you'll take advantage of that and invite a friend. It, it is an encouraging time to, to get into the word and get into the Lord's presence kind of corporately with other women. But Alex, that was world-class, what you brought to us. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, yeah, praise the Lord. All right. Okay. <laughs> praise God. Then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thank you for rightly dividing the word and, and also helping me personally. Um, greater understanding and greater compassion. So the Lord bless you for, for bringing that. And... Um, I guess this is a way just publicly to twist your arm to say, Alex will be returning in a teaching role uh, from time to time. He just hasn't agreed to it yet, but uh, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> the Lord bless you, though. Um, and is Sandy Flora here? I think you're the toughest person in the world. Welcome back, Sandy Flora. For, that's, yeah. Yeah, your, your church has been praying for you. I know you know that, and we're just so happy to see you. Yeah. Um, so could you get back in, into service? Could you hurry up with that? <laughs> 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 
she was already this week. It's like, oh, you put us to shame. Uh, the Lord, praise be to the Lord for giving you strength and healing. And uh, so welcome back. And Willie and Jackie, welcome back from India. So uh, I saw Willie just briefly this morning. And we will arrange a time in the future when they can uh, share with us what uh, that journey was like as they went to India um, in the name of the Lord. So we're glad to see you back as well. The Lord bless you. Okay, uh, I, I just want to pray one more time. Um, and I guess this time it's for me. Maybe it could be for you, but I need the Lord's help with the few things that I'd like to say from the scriptures today. And I think all of us need the Lord's help to, of the Holy Spirit to understand what the scripture says. Because the Holy Spirit is the teacher to the church. God has provided pastors and, and leaders in the church to, to share the word, to read the word, to read the word publicly. But let's, let's give credit where credit is due. The teacher of the church is the Holy Spirit. Paul said that the natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Well, that, that's, what does that mean? It means that spiritual things can only be understood with the help of the one who is spirit with God. And so let's, let's pray together and ask God's help to understand what we'll read here in the next few minutes. Lord, we, we do that. We just humbly ask you, be our teacher. We will sit at your feet. We will listen for your voice. We know we're confident that you can speak to us in ways that we can understand you. And we thank you for that, Lord. Holy Spirit, we're listening for your voice. We know you will draw us to the Father and reveal him. Father, we thank you for your love for us. And Jesus, we remember what you did, your sacrifice. This is a day of honoring you. And the church said, Amen. So we're continuing on in what will be really kind of a journey this year at looking at the kinds of practices that a follower of Jesus Christ incorporates into their life that help them to stay the course. Please understand, I'll say this ahead of each one of these practices or rhythms, we never earn the favor and salvation of God. It's a free gift that comes to anyone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ. This is not a church that would endorse works theology. Does that make sense? Where we can somehow work our way into the favor of God. Salvation and grace is given, but maturity comes over time. And, and some of the practices that we're, we'll talk about, some of the rhythms of a follower of Jesus, those are the things that precede maturity. Have you ever noticed that you can't microwave maturity? I, I, want, I want, you know, maturity in five seconds. Ding. You might get hot water, but you ain't going to get spiritual maturity. Think about the people in your life that you would say, I would go to them for counsel about the things of the Lord. I would go to them for spiritual counsel. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm not a betting man, but I'd be willing to bet some of your hard-earned money that the person or people that came to your mind that you would go to for spiritual counsel incorporate so these practices and rhythms in their life. And today we're going to begin to talk for the next few weeks about incorporating the Word of God, the Scriptures, the Bible, into our life. I can tell you, anyone that falls into the category for me of wise counsel, not one of them has this missing from their life. They're people of practiced devotion of taking in the Word of God. So I just want to talk for a few moments today as we start over the next three weeks at looking at the power, the value, the importance of the Scriptures in the life of a follower of Jesus. 
I take in, uh, I try to take in the scriptures in a variety of ways throughout the week. One of the ways that I do it, and I'm realizing in this season of my life, and it started probably a few years ago, I realized I'm, I'm kind of an audio learner. And so I'd read through the Bible, you know, good hardback copy of the Bible several times. And then I got on my phone uh, a Bible that it'll actually, I can listen to it while I was out walking. And so I started listening to the Bible. And recently, a friend of mine back in the summer said that she was listening through the Bible on this Bible podcast. It was called, oh, I got it written here, The Bible in a Year Podcast with Father Mike Schmitz. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Father Mike Schmitz. He's a Catholic priest. You might notice I'm not Catholic, right? I'm, I'm decidedly Protestant. But when my friend Olivia, who's an ordained pastor, said, talked about listening through the Bible and how encouraging it was, I thought, well, I sure respect Olivia. And that's, that's kind of sounds like fuel to her. I'm going to give it a try. So I went and I found Father Mike Schmidt's The Bible in a Year podcast on Spotify. It's all over the place. You can find it in a variety of ways. But I found it on Spotify on my phone and I listened to it. And on all it is, is Father Mike Schmitz reading a portion of Scripture, a short portion of Scripture. And then he takes a few minutes to make comments on what was read. And that's it. It's about 15 minutes. So I started doing it. And, and this is... Have you, I, all I'm going to say, I'll, I'll couch this by saying, I'm not perfect yet. Did I just pop anybody's bubble there? When my friend Olivia said, oh yeah, I'm hoping to finish it by next March, this, this year, in March. And like, she was already like hundreds of days ahead of me, right? And I'm like, I'm going to beat Olivia. In listening through the Bible, I mean, Sean is nothing sacred. Just relax. Take your competitive. Bob and I were talking about being competitive. Walk 100 miles to see a game of marbles, right? So I'm like, settle down. So I got through the competitive thing, and I just got into a, here's the word, rhythm. And the drive from our house here is roughly 15 minutes, if I obey the laws. And... Um, I started, I would listen to Father Mike Schmitz for a day, listening to the Bible in a Year podcast. And so the other day, as I was listening, I heard this scripture. We're going to read it together, but then I want to tell you about a thought that I had. So where we're at in, where I'm at at least, in listening through the scriptures in a year it was in Chronicles, and so we were in First Chronicles, and this is what was read. I want to read it out loud, and then I just want to share a thought that I had. It's from First Chronicles, and the, the context is King David is very, very near the end of his life, and he's giving some charge to his son Solomon, who will follow him as king. Okay, that's the context. So now, with God as our witness... And in the sight of all Israel, the Lord's assembly, I give you this charge. Okay, this is David to his son. Be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God so that you may continue to possess this good land and leave it to your children as a permanent inheritance. That sounds like something a father would say to a son if he knew he was near the end of his life. And Solomon, my son... Learn to know God, the God of your ancestors, intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. And then... It went on. But as I was listening, I'm driving and I'm listening. And right away when I heard that last 
verse or two. I thought, oh, uh, where, where am I listening? I got I to gotta, I gotta go back to that. So when I got to the church, I, I, I knew it was near the end of First, you know, first Chronicles. So I, I, I went back, and I thought something about that, it just hit me. You, and that's this idea that when we're reading Scripture, and we just settle down, and we ask God, God, would you help me hear your voice? Sometimes something will stick out. I, at this point, this was in the middle of maybe three or four chapters that were read and then commented on. But there was something, and I didn't know what it was, but it's like, I got to go back. I got to go back to that. So if you could put verse 9 back up there. First Chronicles 28, 9. This was my thought after I came in and I sat down at my desk and, and it was, and Solomon, my son, Learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Okay, that was the first thing. It's like, what would it be like if I knew God intimately? What would my life look like? And, and I thought, you know what? It, it's possible to learn that. How, do, how does somebody learn how to know God intimately? So, some of that is unpacked just in the next little instruction that David gives to his son. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. Oh, I, do you ever have this where you read the scripture and then you get convicted? Because you ain't doing it and I'm like worship and serve him with your whole heart it's like that song all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give a lot of the times my song has been one tenth to Jesus I surrender one tenth to him I freely give I surrender one tenth you know or whatever and sometimes it's, I don't surrender anything. And I, so, the, the conviction didn't come to me right away. It was just like, you, you got to go back and sit and spin on that verse. There's something there. So it was that word intimately that just kind of jumped off the page at me. What is David saying to his son Solomon? If you read the life of David, you see moments of intimacy between David and God. And then you see moments where he's not surrendering and worshiping and serving wholeheartedly, right? I think what he's wanting to say as a father is, oh, son, this, this might be the best advice I could ever give you. Jesus, he, and, and David wouldn't have known the name Jesus, but we can forecast ahead, and I could say to you, and, and what I hear the Lord saying to me is, Sean, I'm worth it. Jesus is worth it. That wholehearted, intimate approach to worshiping him. Well, you might think, okay, good, okay, move on into your day, but there was still something kind of getting at me about that verse. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. Wow. That, that's an amazing thing for a dad to say to a son. Listen, if you'll seek him wholeheartedly, you're going to find him. There have been times when I have been absolutely lost. Like, where's God? I have no idea, but they think I lost him, right? I've talked to a lot of people too, and that's why I'm like, I can relate. They have no idea where God is at in their life or in this world. I can relate to that. I've had even some seasons in my life where I'm like, God, where are you? 
But David is saying to his son, and the scriptures, we'll talk more about this later, this is an authoritative word and revelation of the Almighty God. Some don't accept it as that. I, I'm not offended by that. But I can tell you, I accept the scriptures, the, what we would call the Bible, as an authoritative revelation of the word God. And so for me, when I, when, when I read this, well, that's not just true for Solomon. That, if I fast forward, that would be true for me. If I seek him, I'll find him. Let me push it a little further. I think it's true for you, too. If you will seek him, he'll stand behind his promise. He'll allow himself to be found. We sang that song. He's running after me. Right? All my life you have been faithful. You know where that comes from? It comes from a story that Jesus told about a son who had a real rich father. And the son said, Dad, I want my inheritance now. So the dad gives it to him. And he takes it and blows it on worthless things. And he gets to the point where he's almost dying of starvation. <clears throat> and he's feeding pigs in some pig pen. And the pigs are eating better than he is. And he comes to his senses, Jesus says, and decides, I could go home and work for my father. I don't have to be his son anymore. But I would eat better if I was just one of his servants. And he decides to go back home after burning the bridge when he left with his inheritance. And Jesus tells the story of his father seeing him from a ways off and his father runs to him. Your goodness is running. And that's, that's the Lord. The Lord's goodness is running. We might hear this scripture. If you seek him, you'll find him. He's hiding. He's trying to, I hope they don't see me back here. No. No. So often the Lord is like, I'm, I can tell you're seeking after me. Uh, you, will, uh, you will find me. Listen, if you're in a place, even in a, a short season or maybe a long season in your life where you're saying, I have no idea where God is at. I give to you an authoritative word from the scripture. This isn't from Sean. If we seek him, he will allow himself to be found. And then you can expect there will be times of refreshment that will come to you in your spirit. Things in ways the world could never refresh us. So, that's one of the ways that I take in the scriptures, this audio, right? But then, Diane and I had a chance um, ahead of the week that Alex spoke. We went to a house that's out in central Oregon, and it, it's so nice it doesn't even have an internet, right? Would, does that sound like a ball and chain taken off of you? No Facebook, no internet, right? And then you find out, I think I'm addicted to those things, right? We were gone, and, and we, we, this has been a practice of ours for quite some time to get away for a week or two at times when we can, just to have a, a practiced, deeper dive into time with one another and time with the Lord. And so I decided in that week away that I would read, not listen to, uh, but read from a, the old-fashioned Bible. <laughs> and I thought, where, Lord, where, where can I go this week for some time just with you? And I, I chose Psalm 119. You know what's interesting about Psalm 119? It's the longest book in the Bible. It's, Psalm 119 is right in the middle of the Bible. And it has 22 stanzas of seven verses apiece. The Hebrews used Psalm 119 
not only to teach their children the Hebrew alphabet, because each stanza begins with the, first, with the successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And I thought, well, in the past when I've read Psalm 119, knowing that I'm a little competitive, I'm like, just pin the throttle and go. I'm getting through this bad boy, right? Like, wow, you just pump the brakes there, slick, and listen for the voice of God. So I decided I'm just going to take it a stanza at a time. A while back, I read a book by a guy who's now kind of out of favor, right? He, there were some things that went on in his life that um, put him out of favor with uh, folks that are followers of Jesus. But he said something that sticks with me to this day. He was talking about taking time to be in the Word, and he has a, had a favorite chair in his life in his house, and he would sit in that chair, and he would read the Word, and he called it his chair time. So I started doing that. And I had some chair time a week ago in Psalm 119, and I want to read it to you. This is by way of saying, let's listen for how the Lord might reveal himself, and to say, what, I'm going to encourage you just week by week, take a little bit of time to read the scriptures. Why? Because it's food. It's what the follower of Jesus needs. But don't try to read the whole thing. Just take in a small portion and, let, and then chew on it and ponder it. This is what I read a few days ago. It's, this stands is called Daleth. It's, uh, that's probably a butchering of this particular letter of the alphabet. It's early on. It's Psalm 119, verses 25 through 32. I want to read it. And then just take a moment to reflect on it. Remember now, the Hebrews used this psalm to teach their children not only the alphabet, but about their Lord God. Psalm 119, starting in verse 25. The stanza is called Daleth. I lie in the dust. Revive me by your word. I told you my plans, and you answered now teach me your decrees. Help me understand your commandments, and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions I've chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. I cling to your laws, Lord. Don't let me be put to shame. I will pursue your commands, for you expand my understanding. That's the word of the Lord. So I read that. And I thought, I'm going to take some time to reflect on that. And I just want to share with you a few of my reflections. By way of saying, when I tell you at the end of our time here, take some time this week to read a small portion of the scripture. Just a small portion. And then reflect on it. And listen, is God saying anything to you? Is he giving you any direction? Is he giving you any revelation of himself? Here's, what, here's some of my thoughts. The writer of this psalm is unknown. Some people think it's David. Some people think it's Daniel. But there's, it's not identified who wrote Psalm 119. But it's a person who had a lot of experiences in life and experiences with God. One of the experiences they had is Something happened to them that they were lying in the dust. This is a form in, the, in that world, in that time, of mourning. This person had some sort of experience that caused them to deeply mourn. But they said, revive me with your word. Okay, I don't, don't want to jump too quickly and make the word all about me, but... If the word could revive them, if the scriptures, if the word of God, 
that they had at that time, which was not nearly as much of as we have. And, and it was re reviving to them. What would it be to me? Could I be revived by reading the scriptures, by being and meditating on them when I'm in a time of mourning and sadness? Yes. Verse 27, help me understand the meaning of your commandments. If you seek him, you will find him. We, we, we heard David say that to Sol Solomon. He, that's something that God is known for, for helping people find him. This writer must have known something along the same lines because they're asking, help me to understand and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. Listen, our lives are busy, fast-paced. I timed myself driving here today. I mean, I put the clock on myself. The clock, the world already does that. That's how weird I am. I made it here in 14 minutes and 31 seconds, and I didn't break very many laws. I, but I, I'm, I have a busy life. So do you. What's the value of taking just a few moments, here's the word, to meditate? Have you, have you, have you taken, even pressed pause to do that even in the last seven days or last 30 days? I want to encourage you, this week when you take time just to read a small portion of the word, hit pause, meditate. I brought this candle up here because, and it's an electric candle. I can touch it and not get burned. Sometimes Diane and I will, will light a candle when we're taking time, chair time, or what we call just to have some time of devotion with God to be in the Word. A candle can just set a tone but you know what it does we we have candles here on the communion table and long has the a flame from a candle been representative or to invoke this idea that god is amongst us uh, flame and fire have been a representation of his presence so you can do this when you just take, I'm going to take 15 minutes, I'm going to light a candle. I just want to create an environment of encounter. And by the way, I appreciate Shannon and Bev for what they do on communion days when they help us and they, they're preparing not only the elements, but they're creating an environment where we can encounter God. Connie does the same thing. Thank you, Connie, for... Uh, putting these candles out and making this sanctuary just a place where we can visually say, I want to encounter God, right? So I put the candle here just as a reminder to me this morning, the presence of Jesus with me while I'm in his word, the Holy Spirit giving me instruction. So when I meditate, I'm not alone and neither are you. You're not alone. One more thought from this, from this psalm, from this portion of the psalm. Verse 30, I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. Don't discount the decisions that you'll make today and this week to intentionally go God's way instead of your own. Don't discount that. Each of us will have many, many, many opportunities in the next 168 hours. That's the next week. Even in that short period of hours, we will have choices. And the choices, some of them will boil down to, am I going to go God's way or my own way on this? Right? In this psalm, 
this writer was clearly wrestling with his way versus God's way. And he writes here as a commitment. I've chosen to be faithful. I've determined to live by your regulations. Translation, we'll put it in the words of Jesus. Not my will, but your will be done. I want, I want to be praying that prayer in my life. And so when I took time and, and then I reflected on it, I thought, Lord, I need to come back to that commitment I made to you in 1975. I want to be that man. And I've wandered from that from time to time. But I want this day and this week to be a week where people, where you would know, Lord, and if anybody's watching, Sean chooses the Lord's way over his own. But if you think that that gets done by our strength, be careful. Be careful with that. Willpower, as I understand it, is this. I make a decision, but I need God's power to make it happen. Amen. That's willpower. So uh, this reflection on this scripture, I thought, Lord, I want to give you my will. I want to, uh, so I, I've given you the audio. I use the scriptures, but there, there's another. Here is, a, if you go to your phone and you go to the app on your phone, you can type in Bible or Holy Bible. And if you see this app, the brown Bible, it says Holy Bible with the little red, what is that, page? Yeah. If you see that, that will be known as the U version, Y-O-U, U version of the Bible. It's free. I've downloaded it on my phone and I've downloaded it on my laptop. Here's another way that I try to give myself another portal to get into the Word of God. The U version not only has the Bible in every language you don't speak, it also has it in the language you do speak and multiple translations of that language, right? But it also has Bible studies. So I have a couple of guys that I, on a fairly regular basis, am going through short Bible studies that give a little portion of Scripture, some reflection, and a place to jot a note or two on the phone. And you can share it. Larry and I are sharing version Bible studies together. I have a friend from college. His name is Rory. I call him Dr. Cool. Uh, Doc and I have been doing this for years, sharing a Bible study together. So I, I, why would I take time to mention this? Because the scriptures are life. But we have to make a decision, will I get to it? Will I get in it? Will I feed on it? Will I feed on the Lord? So I want to try to remove one more obstacle if that is an obstacle for you. You can have a free Bible on your computer, on your phone, if it's a smartphone. If it's not a smartphone, you're freer than me. But if you have a smartphone, you can go to the app section and download this Bible, and you will have it in your hands. Most of the versions, it will read it to you if you're an audio learner. You can share Bible studies with one another. One of the rhythms of a follower of Jesus who stays the course is that they take in a portion of the word day by day, week by week. And then it strengthens us to go his way and not our own. And lastly, here's a portion of scripture where Jesus met with his closest friends before he died and he shared one last meal with them if you have your own Bibles and you want to turn to Matthew 26 we'll be reading just a short passage from this conversation that Jesus had with his disciples on that night of their last dinner together Matthew 26 starting in verse 19 
So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover meal there. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve. The twelve would have been his closest friends, his disciples. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Have you ever been at dinner and had somebody all of a sudden bring up an awkward conversation? (laughs) Boy, this is a great meal. It sure is. Hey, by the way, one of you guys is going to betray me. Awkward. That's what he does. Verse 22, greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, am I the one, Lord? By the way, if I'm at the table and I have any social acuity, I'm going to be listening for what he says to the others. But they're so distressed, it doesn't appear that they even listen to what Jesus says to any of them, any of their other friends. Each one asked in turn, am I the one, Lord? He replied, One of you who has just eaten from this bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die as the Scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. The dinner got heavy in in just a few moments, didn't it? Verse 25, Judas, the one who would betray him, asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus said, you have said it. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. When I read that, every time, I think, Sean, you're Judas. You're Judas. I don't want to be Judas. I want to be a faithful follower of Jesus. But I've betrayed the Lord. And yet, he still offered the bread and the juice. He still offered himself to Judas and he offers himself to me and he offers himself to you, to each of us. So why, why do we do this? Well, one of the things that Jesus said is to do this in remembrance of me and do it until I return. The Lord will return. He hasn't yet. I don't know when he will return. I'm, I hope you're comforted by the fact that I'm not telling you, oh, he's going to return this time or that time. Because Jesus said, watch out for those guys. I just know that if he says he's returning, he's going to. He even said, don't worry about the timing. Watch for the signs of the time. Focus more on preparation than prediction. Okay? This is about preparation remembering what he did for us. So, uh, Dave, if you would come and just give us some worship music to have as we take time. And and I'm going to invite you, if you're uh, prepared to share or to pass out and serve the communion, if you would just please come now. And um, in in a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand and invite you to come to one of these tables. If you can't get up and move around, that's okay. We'll have somebody bring it to you. Um, would you pray with me as we prepare ourselves to receive and remember? Lord, we, we just intentionally remember what you've done for us. We say thank you. We need you. We want you. And we thank you for accepting us, 
loving us and changing us. We put our faith in you, Lord Jesus, and we remember your sacrifice for us. All praise be to you, Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask if you would stand now and feel free to make your way to the tab- any table that you'd like to. If you have not yet taken this, then I invite you to take it and remember the Lord's sacrifice, his body broken for you, his blood shed for you. And know this, he loves you. The Lord bless you as you take this. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for giving us your spirit. Thank you for giving us a new name and making us your beloved. Lord, I pray that you'd bless my friends here. We are your children. And it's in faith and in the authority of your name that I say the Lord bless you the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, his beloved, and give to you his peace. Friends, I want to encourage you this week, take a moment or two to open the scripture in whatever way you can this week. Take in a portion 
take a moment or two to reflect on it and listen for the voice of the Lord and then do that. Go that direction. Amen? Be strengthened in the word, friends. God bless you. I hope you have a great week. Lord bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you.